Good evening, community board members, staff, and members of the public, and welcome to the Greytown Community Board and our first meeting via Zoom and on YouTube. YouTube. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I need more uh, caffeine tonight. Um, tonight, we are holding our uh, extraordinary meeting. So before we start, I do need to go through some a couple of things. First of all, for anybody who's watching, if you're wondering, when you see us with our laptops, what we're doing, um, we are updating and editing currently our community plan. So it doesn't mean we are distracted or we're not listening. It just means we're actually working hard on tonight's agenda. Uh, so for all buddy present, um, the emergency exits for the town hall are clearly indicated. And if we need to evacuate the building, use any of the emergency exits and head towards Texas Street that way and assemble in the playground area. Please remain at the assembly area until the building has been confirmed clear. Um, again, this meeting is being streamed live stream by Council's YouTube channel. The meeting will also be recorded and subject to the recording being of suitable quality will be made available on Council's YouTube channel via a link on Council's website. Um, under extraordinary business, um, I have something that I would like to add under extraordinary business tonight. I would like to add that the board consider funding the Great Town Festival of Christmas Flags to be done tonight. The reason I've asked for it to be added to the agenda is um, that there is a time limit on the decision. So we really sort of have to make that decision sooner than later. So if possible, I hope that we can make that decision tonight um, because there is a delay, a, a time period in which they would be able to um, purchase the flags in time to be able to have them for the July festival. Um, just for uh, adding this to our, the, uh, do I have a mover to add the funding to the Great Town Festival of Christmas flags to be considered under item 8.1, the chairperson report. We don't move that. You, Mark, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those against, please raise your hand. Motion is carried unanimously. Uh, takes us now to apologies. I'm not aware of any apologies given that we're all here. Any other apologies from anyone else? Uh, Amanda's here. Does anyone have any conflicts of interest to declare with regards to the items on the agenda? It's quite a short agenda, so I don't perceive that. No. Um, acknowledgements and tributes. Does anyone have any acknowledgements or tributes they would like to make? Uh, this can be a well-known person in the community has passed away or made a significant achievement. Is there something that we'd like to have noted? I know there was a death down Papa Wai, Eli. 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 I remember his last name. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, if we can note, do you want to spell that just for the record? Um, O-I-H. A I A, I think it's the first name. I can always check, yeah, I double check. Sure. Yeah, and the N I think. Yeah. I just know that, that it was a big hanging and um um point to know. Okay. Uh there is no public participation tonight given the type of meeting and the shortness. Um therefore there aren't any actions for the public participation. Um so that now brings us to the community board minutes from our formal meeting on the 3rd of May. Um, has anybody found any corrections to the Great Town Community Board meetings that we, minutes that we need to make? No. And we do have copies of the minutes here if everybody doesn't have seen them. Um, do I have a mover then for the minutes of the Great Town Community Board meeting held on 3 May 2023 to be confirmed as a true and correct record? Thank you, Joe. So I second there. Thank you, Warren. All those in favor, please raise your hand. That was carried unanimously. <laughs> okay, that now takes us to the chairperson's report. Which...
Okay, so um, uh, do I have a mover to receive the chairperson report? So thank you, Aaron. Do I have a seconder? Yep. Thank you. you know, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion is carried unanimously. Um, okay, so the first item is, do I have a mover um, to adopt? Wait a minute, we need to clarify that one for Yes, so, yeah, so let's turn, turn now to the community, Greytown Community Board plan. There's a couple of points that you remember we put in there that I'd look for everybody to discuss. So one of them was how we were going to encapsulate Papu or Iwi. Um, it was taken to Leanne, uh, and Leanne actually said that um, Mana Fenua actually encapsulates everything, so we could leave it with there. But that has there has been sort of a diverging voice on that through the Mana Standing Committee. So it actually seemed more appropriate, she said. Um, if you were just going to want to cover it all off to include um, Hapu, Iwi, and Ma and, Mar and Marai. So I know we were looking at it was Iwi. Um, there was issues about the fact that we had more central of Hapu sort of in our board, but to probably cover everything off appropriately, it would seem better to just include everything and therefore be Hapu, Iwi, and Marai. Um, know that there was some issues around the Iwi um, I thought about that on my way here. So um, the, what I thought the best way to look at that is let's think about who we know we are going to be dealing with. Remember, those are our people. Those are the mana fenna they're going to deal with. They do belong to Iwis, but we're dealing with those people. So when we take that into consideration, I was hoping this just including everybody would be okay. So if everyone is happy with that change, any non-happies with that change, speak now before we go forward. Okay. So we're having all three. All three. Yeah. And that's it. It was Iwi, and we've yeah. added Hapu and Marai. And that's just to change in our culture and heritage, is that right? Um, it's to change, change every it. single place there's work in partnership with Mata Fenua. Yeah. Every single spot all the way through. The document. Is that's been changed. Okay. Because where under, under the strategic framework, where we encapsulated the four well beings for the Local Government Act. Under cultural well being, that's where they had it, but they had it as Mana Fenua, Hangata Fenua, Iwi, and then went on to respecting right, uh, okay. Hanga. They didn't include Hapu or Marai. So then there was this kind of thing that Iwi was sort of vague and not who we were really dealing with. So then we talked about changing it to Hapu because that's more who we deal with. Got it. But then instead we've gone and said, okay. get back to on to Hapu, Iwi, and Marai. And given that mainly we deal with Marai because we're dealing so much with Hapu and kind of made sense to include those. Um, the other change, I don't know if everybody saw my email, just so everybody knows, is um, all the way through the document, I took those four well-beings and added them in, because we had kind of left that sort of so much on how we were, um, what our priorities were going to be, what we were going to do to contribute to the long-term plan outcomes, how we were going to do this, and how we were going to be successful. We focused so much on our plan that um, we hadn't finished all those. So I did add a lot. And I think everybody will notice under community, pretty much included almost every one of them. Felt like as once I started on. So, we just, just so everybody had tuned into that under community, our community as a whole punch contributes to the long term plan outcomes through. So, all of those I took from those four well beings. And as you can see, I put in quite a lot but our community as a whole encapsulates a lot. So if there's any there that anybody thought shouldn't be there, that's the section to really look at.
we're going to put in part of the place of well being, should we have something to create? Bring the spaces and break out. Okay, now, oh, so, so, so that's in there. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, wait, so just, just so it's on there. I think my page is mine. Under bringing our plan together, strategic framework, that social well being, economic well being, environmental well being, cultural well being, that's taken from the plan, so that's these, and then take those and I've applied them in. So, under where's the green space? The green space is under our community as a whole. So, if you go to how are we going to do this? Oh, it's been deleted. That's supposed to be green. I think that's supposed to be green space there. Hang on. What page are you on? I'm on nine. page 10. I think nine. Yeah. Let me just pull up my. I'm just going to go back to mine. All right, somehow it's been cut out. Right. Yeah, I've got, you know, I think we've got some just as um, a typo there. Second one, and uh, how are we going to do this? It's just got space. So yeah, that would... I just want to find the original wording. It's, um, it's all right, okay. It's, it's on all of them. Okay. Um, that's supposed to be turn gray space into green space. So I don't know what that happened. That's supposed to be turn. Well, I was going to be more on the kind of supporting the community with extensions of the green space or something. Oh. Like we, we, we're going to support them. The gray space into green space. Do you want to speak to that? That's yeah, different. That's, that's, that's different. That's different. That's different. That's different. I'm talking about the, the, the sports grounds, green space. Oh, yeah, no, that's in here. Green space is in here because. Well, under, 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 if we know if we've been successful. What's that? Um, uh, on page eight of the, of the printed one. Yeah. How we know if we've been successful. Parks reserves are delegated. Long term plan includes and maintain the cultural area. Well, there's another thing there as well, isn't there? That's part of those under a community. It was some of the stuff disappeared. Yeah, because it's in the one online, but it's not in this one here. Oh, I see here to increase green space to break down. Yep. Okay. This is council to include, which we have funded. We're going to support it. Just advocate too, you know. Yeah, advocate for the long term plan to include local priorities focus on environmental sustainability oh, and the term of or separate. allocation of council yeah. land for yeah. the purpose of yeah. green space. Yeah. 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 That's good. We moved, yes. we took some of the concepts and moved them around. I tried to bring them together. Mm -hmm. um, like that was because that was all environmental sustainability. I saw it as environmental sustainability because green space is also environmental. Having that, then I moved it there with established EV stations. So, yeah, so they're on page 12. Is that on this? Yes, there. But the space up here is supposed to be turned gray, green space. And that's something that Martin can speak to. Do we talk about that, that now? I think so. Excuse me, sorry, broken my throat. It's not COVID, the same. <laughs> Rat tested today. <laughs> Rat tested. Um, uh, it's called Greening the Grey, and it's an initiative that sort of started um, in the UK, and it's been adopted by a lot of councils there, in particular Sheffield and Edinburgh. Uh, and it's the idea of greening up grey space. So it's largely um, cities, but it's something that can be adopted 
here um, easily as well. So it's it's making the use of like urban space, greening it up rather than leaving it leaving it grey as it is. Yeah. Um, so it extends from a community level through to a council level. So for argument's sake, when they're doing um, if they're redoing the pipes, when they put them back in, that becomes a rain garden or a bio, or a bio swale or whatever on top of that. So it aids in drainage, et cetera, water, cleaning water filters, depending on what that fill is, it filters the water through, cleans the water out. But that means we um, we grow our grass long, plant in amongst it. So that takes away that whole that cost we've then got, say with city care, which do allows a job anyway of maintaining that from like a monthly thing. So it's a financial saving then to like once or twice a year it gets weeded. So you just sort of, you know, it's better for you know obviously nature, people's well being, falling, planting trees in Main Street, that whatever. That sort of thing. So it's just a, it's kind of like a broad brush stroke of, of yeah. lots of little things. More gardens, basically. It was yeah, a basically, but it's, it's like it's like it's like ripping out lawns and putting in something that's a bit more constructive than that. So fragments say turning part of say Stellable Park into you know, into more of a meadow, I guess, you know, that becomes more, so it's not just more lawn, which doesn't really achieve anything. In Australia, they had two residential prop, um, streets kind of like parallel to each other. One with trees and one without. The one without had a 20 degrees difference in temperature. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it means, so it's just, it all and, contributes to the yeah, shading, and if it's down low, then obviously it brings in, you know, nature, bugs, et cetera, et cetera. So, it's, you know, it's just great. But also, again, in terms of the, the overall benefits as to what it does is, is in terms of like runoff, especially with rain. So it's, it's like would be uh, the, the subdivisions that are all being, like the ones going in, you know, it's just being concreted over. It's like you stop that and go, you can't just concrete the driveway, concrete everything because there's nowhere for the, you know, as we all know, there's nowhere for it to go. So, yeah, so it's, it's just an idea of adopting that and going. I've been looking at this for a long time. Councils have been forcing people to concrete and tar seal. Totally. Instead of having gravel driveways yeah. before the state. Yeah. Mate, there's just that, that little home they've built next to me. Yeah. They've done just that concrete of the whole thing, right? Not even finished. The rain we had last week, they're in there with the blowers trying to dry the place out. Yeah, yeah. You know, because the water's no uh, uh, brain. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. So that's what greening the grey is, is, you know. I say it's an initiative that can be adopted at a community level and then hopefully expanded beyond that. Can I just go to page five? You know how I sent through my writing? Um, I have seen it in print. Could I just change it? What I said, and is what I want generations to experience now and in the future? Because I've written down future twice. Otherwise, it sounds silly. Does it make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Click that through, yeah. or yeah. you got it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is what I is what I want generations to experience now and in the future. Thanks. Sorry, because uh, Woody and I did it quite quickly. <laughs> You're wearing time. Okay, whatever. You said to tweak it a little bit before I tweaked it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, thanks. Try not to tweak it. Yeah. You can keep those eels that are in there, John. Yeah. Uh, I would like to write a picture book one day about my experience about that. But, um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it wasn't top size when I sent it to you. So I had all that in italics to the side, oh. angled. I'm going to fix that. Um, okay. Other things that just to draw attention to um, is um, one of the changes was we put in no chain stores, but then what he pointed out that we already have some chain stores. So sort of broke it down and put down to no fast food chain stores um, because it seems like that's more or less what we're trying to focus on. <laughs> yeah. And forward, but we do have the style guide in there. So yeah. And then the only other one was is there is we have limit in the um under the back to the strategic framework and the four well beings underneath the long local government act. Um it was listed as that limit growth that it passed this change. Um, and there was a request to see if it could be environmental change and not climate. So does there anybody have strong feelings on that point? If there's strong feelings that split it, we can always do climate and environmental change so that we re re we sorry, reflect. Look, look, sorry, Louise, where are you? What page are you on that? Where are you now? I take it back to, it's best to go back to the strategic one on six. Bringing our plan together. Six and seven. Strategic framework. Yeah. Page seven in red. 
my pages. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it might be on some. Oh well, yeah, it, it's throughout. Yeah, there's a, there's a there's a climate change. This there's different phrases of how it's of how it's used. So I put up there climate or environmental. Down here I put climate and or environmental. I meant to have that all the way through, um, but it, it's, it's climate or environmental, one or the other, or is it both? So I'm going to the one that asked for that. Because so what do, what do, we do? do we want to say limit growth? Do we want to limit growth though? This is limit growth that impacts. This is, it says it limit growth that impacts climate change. Do, we want, do you want to say we want to limit growth? That's good, the economic well being. Mm -hmm. We had it because I had it as limit growth. We changed it on, we did that. Actually, I did that with you guys on Saturday. Limit growth that impacts, it was originally that impacts the environment um, or impacts climate change. And then it would switch to the environment, switched it to the environment and environmental. So we, we had to change that to limit growth that impacts climate change. In other words, things that would, you know. My, my view on it. I mean, I can take that one out if you guys don't the want to. Environment's our local environment. There's too much conflicting interest, in my liking, on climate change these days. And the um, anything we do in our little town isn't going to change the climate of the world. But we want to look after our own environment. So you want to see climate removed and just leave it at environmental? Yeah. Environment, or even our yeah. environment, yeah. yeah. To do with our environment, because I'm more concerned about. Yeah, I'm not with that as well. Yeah, I think environmental. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Taking climate out. Okay. So, first of all, so if I took out limit growth that impacts environmental change, is that happy to be stayed in? Or are you not wanting that whole one in? Because that is going to take it and it out. So what, so what do we mean by the limit? Climate? Limit growth. Yeah. Well, originally, mean. we had limit growth that impacts the environment. Well, to me, that is. You put up too many buildings and too much concrete, then you impact the environment. It's literally what we just talked about. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Limit growth. That's what I'm thinking. It's sort of a long boss. It's green, green for growth. Yeah, because it comes under green. economic well being. So, I see it more as development of businesses. So, you don't want to have businesses develop in such a way that you impact the environment. For example, oh, very story building that was going to go in opposite the butchers yeah, would be an example of that. Would, totally. Yeah. Industrial park in the middle of town. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So the one we had originally switched it to was limit growth that impacts the environment is what I last had it at. I well, rather, 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 than neg well, rather than negative, should we would support yeah, support support growth it's after the environment, yeah. something like that. Yeah. 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 Rather, than, rather than limiting, like we, we actually want to support the positive side of it. So yeah. support growth. Port growth that. There yeah, we still you can still say impacts because we want to support it that impacts environmental. So support growth that impacts the environment. Yeah. Support growth that impacts. Support, support growth, growth that doesn't impact there we go. the environment. It's still going to be negative then. Yeah. You're either limiting growth that's going to impact the environmental change, or you're going to support growth that doesn't. It's still going to be a negative phrase. So I might as well leave it at limit growth. Let me just go. Let, let me play around with it for a few minutes. Um, I'm going to leave it back. I'm going to go back. It's just come from that. So I'm going to leave it where it's at and go back to limit. Right now, it's at limit growth that impacts environmental change. Would it be enhances? Improves? And improves the environment. Yeah. So support growth that improves the environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Positive or rare. Yeah. Support <laughs> growth that <laughs> This is going to be spell check though before it goes. This isn't. What now? <laughs> it was spell check. So what now? <laughs> Odd words probably put in roll the spell check and then pick up for it. Um, when you read something a hundred times, and, uh, yeah, it starts to just look at it. So, um, if you've got spell checks, you need to point them out so we can catch them. Uh, well, um, yeah. no, we don't have to do it now. You can give them to me on your piece of paper. <laughs> Take them on that draft and I'll change them. 
I don't want to edit your word voice, no. No, no, it's okay. No, because uh, we're going to pass this and uh, subject to minor edits That's okay. where spell checks are. So, I, hey, guys, I've looked at this a hundred times. Yeah. It's long past. Not a criticism, Lois. I didn't take it, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally saying, if you see, I had my mother spell check. This is how much I could not like, get through this. So, it got to that point. All right, I'll change that now through. So... Um, and everywhere else, it's we're going to get rid of climate and we're just going to call it an environmental change. And I get that now. The past three change stories. Leave it in red. And I agree with you, Emma. I think we've done a great job to put, pull that together for 10 pages and, and the time that we've got. Yeah. So I reckon it's a really lovely document. Hopefully the community will love yeah. it. I think it was good. I was, I, and I was I actually was happy to see those notes. It actually was what I had pictured in kind of my first page. And um, by chance, Katie had put that in there. So that will be us, but our logo's not there yet because it's a tech challenge. <laughs> that and the other things. All right, I think that pretty much covers off any of the little bits and pieces that I wanted to make sure everybody was happy about. So on that, um, subject to minor edits and formatting. Now, just so you know, um, there will be some photos that will be added in. There will obviously be better spell checking and double, triple reading um, because I caught lots of typos in this giant document. So I don't want that in our document, but um, so please do seriously have spell checks, let me know. Um, so do I have a mover to adopt 2023, 2024? Uh, I'm always going to be emotional about this. Great Town Community Board plan. <laughs> so minor edits and formatting that did not change the intent of the document. Thank you, Aaron. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Warren. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Okay. Um, so all the yeah, obviously I think that the, the motion is carried unanimously. Um, Could I just ask, Louise? Um, am I the only one, or have you not done your message? No. So now I have asked, and I'm really glad Amanda's here. I have asked Sheila a couple of times and copied Amanda into this a number of times. Um, I don't love my photo, so I have approached Rebecca about doing headshots on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And she's happy to do that. I'm gonna pay for mine because it's I want to do another one. And she's giving us a reduced cost, Amanda. But Neil never had one done. So I thought the South Wire District Council could cover that. Sweet. So you and I will talk and I'll let you know. Sorry, Louise, my email is overflowing and I'm No, I know you were away, but I just I, I just I knew we needed to He'll just raise it. So I just wanted to make sure and we'll book it down. So sweet. Because yeah, you had the hundreds done. So we will yeah. get it done yeah. on Sunday. No, no, yeah. Okay. But we'll we can have a group one done on Sunday. Yes. So sure yes. It's done, though. <laughs> <laughs> you too, Woody. Yes. What I was actually asking you on the front page here. Have you uh... Oh yeah. So um I have that in my head a lot and I had a really good and then this got into my head. And that went out of my head. So that that's going to get that's in right. there. I heard, yeah. 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 It's going to go in for Saturday. I've checked with everybody, these guys. And because it's not yeah. legislative or what we're doing as a thing, it's okay that it doesn't have to be there tonight. Yeah. So I will certainly be circulating it out to you because the final document doesn't have to go in until Saturday. We'll still add our photos after that. No, I just wasn't sure if I missed out it. No, no it's just... Um, yeah. Fine. The actual document just kept. Yeah. Yeah. No, Between. I would take it. Yeah. I take. Yeah. It issues and falling asleep at weird times. I was waking up at weird times. So, so no, I just if I have I have it in my head, but it, I want it to be something that actually is really coming from the board, and I want to try to encapsulate a lot of what you guys have said of what you've done in your um, what you love. Great time. just kind of help, um, and I want to try to put that in there, and I feel it's really important. So it's just not something I'm going to do. It. We can just to pass it though before we see it. Yeah, we can because yep. that's the message part. It's not going to change what what we're going to do and what we're going to submit to the council about is 
this document that were just passed, not my message. Yeah. My message is just, you know, what the people might read that they, yeah. yeah. So okay. yeah, so that's why we can, I double triple check with Katie, Nikki, Amanda. I think I double, because I, it was, it was a double, uh, I double triple check that before that. So yeah. it would have been there, but yeah. And that's, and saying that, um, if there's anything in any of your, we've got it in and you may not want to do it again, but if you do want to make any other changes to your little bits underneath your name, you can do that. Um, we can still add those in. I didn't realize we had to Saturday. So that's why I felt more, I thought we had a Wednesday, Thursday crash course on this one, but we do. So if there's anything that you do, you can. Um, so, um, you know, I, I know I pushed you forward, but um, it's a part of having it done. Because um, just so you guys know, I do want more photos. Like the photo, what I've hoped to do is the actual document is going to look like um, I'd like to have a photo in here. It's got a nice photo. I think this is going to be three pages. I kind of want our vision on its own page. So it'd be its own page and then a really nice photo there with the vision. And then I don't think we're going to have any, then it'll just kind of go into. Uh, the community profile, I still want to get that into proper phrasing, like it's just that the content's there. So what we put in there that we want in there is there. And I, that'll just get um, phrased out a bit better. And I'll send that out. But but the content, we're not going to change what we put into that. So the community profile part's accepted. Cool. Um, the format is might change. And then bringing our plan together, the strategic framework would be its own page. I don't think there'd be a photo unless... We want a picture of Penelope, Penelope, um, or we can find one for the emergency response and ongoing. So this, the tricky part about that kind of photo is since we don't want necessarily people, but I'm still hoping to get a photo for a cultural heritage. And I kind of like the idea of a, like a photo up here larger, like taking these photos and kind of having them large up here, and then the columns kind of underneath. So that kind of really shows that and then that underneath. So that's, so yeah, so there's a bit of formatting to still go on the document. So you're still going to see this again in a formatted document. Um, so yeah. Okay, moving on. You want to um, good sports ones? What do you? Well, I've probably got some good rugby ones if they want some of the rugby kids running around. But, but yeah. Well, this is actually the Memorial Field and this is from the Great Town Rugby. You guys gave this to us. You don't know that, but you gave it that to us. Three sports and leisure and yes, officially there was an okay given from the Great Town Rugby. That's going to get bigger. If you want to see me a couple of the years in the evening. I'm happy to do that as long as it's not a, like I can't have a person because we have to get the permission. That's why I've got a lot of these distant shots because otherwise we've got to get the permission and get the yeah, things. So that's why I like this photo, which is of the rugby fields, of, which is of the drone shot down on Memorial Park. It's yeah. apparently come from Greytown Rugby. Pretty sure it is. Double check. Uh, Memorial Park. Football. Okay, maybe it's football. Um, but you can't see the faces, but this actually big is really impressive. Little, it doesn't look that great. Yeah. Um, but I tried to mess with the but that's Claudia, she's got she'll have some, yeah, people, yeah, like, we'll like, town too. She'll have some awesome players, she'll probably yeah. do us for nothing, yeah. I mean, well, that's and then this one also is I, um, Adam gave me like four or five to look through, and but that's the one I kind of like the most. But I can show you guys the others because that just sort of showed the most of the town hall. That big looks amazing. Yeah, that little looks silly. Yeah. Um, Mike Hayden's overseas. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I what I have to put below this is um, courtesy of Festival Christmas, yeah. and I need to put either courtesy of Greytown Sports and Leisure, or it's going to be courtesy of whoever approved it. I'll check that with Rosie because I have to do courtesies under the photos. So those are those minor edits that still need to be done, but that document had to be finished. Okay, so um, it's uh, 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 um, no, yeah, so now do I have a mover to submit the 2023 2024 Great Time Community Board plan subject to my editors formatting that do not change the intent of the document to the 2023 2024 annual plan consultation? As a mover, it's just different. thank you, Martin. Yep. Second. Secondary, thank you, Neil. All those in favor, raise your hand. Um, and that motion has been carried unanimously. And then we want to delegate someone to speak. 
to the annual plan consultation. Yep. Uh, um, I was going to speak to the the plan. That was okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've already taken the day off, um, so I'm gonna speak to. Perfect. That's okay. Yep. Yeah. Already gotten that day off. Um, but I think anybody and everybody that wants to sort of be there, and then. When, um, sorry, when is this? Where? Eighth of June. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, don't have the time yet because uh, they'll give it to us. Um, and just so everybody knows, um, speaking to the four is Thursday. Twelve forty here at twelve thirty. Yeah. It's the first of June. Change it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll first tomorrow. Uh, yes, Amanda. That's what. Oh, that? Just, just noting that the um, councillors will be hearing. <laughs> So they will be the hearers of the submission. Yes. Okay. I think I'm they should do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they won't be able to attend on behalf of the community board. Oh, no, they will be oh, yeah. no, you hearing to us. Yes. the yes. submissions. You'll be on the other side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 okay. I meant, I meant the others. I meant the other board members of the community board. Yes. The real board members. <laughs> <laughs> there's just those two yeah things. so um there are two weird how this gone okay so then the next point of to consider is making a submission to the far north farm submission and i think joe has put information out there and has some more information to speak to that um so i'm just going to hand the floor over to Go to just kind of speak to why I'm making a submission. It was 12 pages long, sorry, but the, the, the last two pages were um, was a speech that Andrew gave to the last community board. I don't know if you guys had a chance. Yeah, I got there. Yeah, so that was um, obviously some things when you investigate change, like the Woolworths situation, you realise that you, you can't comment on certain things like they they were saying that if it's at the council meeting that if it's not in the RMA act you can't talk about it as a, a problem that's you know so for example um property values was something that a lot of people were concerned about and that because it's not in the RMA okay. as such that you could not mention it however um we were given a, doc, a document called reverse sensitivity and I haven't had a chance to read it I'm just started highlighting it which was a supreme court a case. supreme court case where I think a judge has mentioned made mention of how the RMA should have had that in it and the government made a major cock up not having it in there excuse my French of um yeah so it was something a an old lawyer passed on to us so, so it says um reverse sensitivity exists when an established use produces adverse effects and a new use is proposed for nearby land. So that's how that works. So I, like you said, I'm, this is new. I can share this document with everyone that's to right. read, but it's, 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 it's quite big. And like there's um, a lot of people who have been reading up on this. Um, yes, I guess if you've got any questions about what I kind of sent through, I was, tr I was trying to get a feel of the people who are directly affected by far north. Um, and that's why I broke it down to flooding, earthquake, um, the, the hazards, if you like, and all the information regarding a flight. So obviously Jimmy Field has got an airstrip right there that's directly affected by Far North's proposal. Um, so I tried giving you an, an understanding of what the people in that area are, are feeling. Yeah. But I guess if there are any questions, I'm happy to try and answer them. Were they having another meeting this week or something? Yes. Details? Because a lot of people are quite um, overwhelmed with making submission, the group, SWAG, have offered to, to um, get people to come in and they'll help them write a submission or give them some ideas about what it might look like. Yeah. So um, I understand, like, with the Heritage uh, Trust who did the Woolworths when I met Warren, a lot of us just said, oh, we – um, agree to that submission. We support that one as well. So there are a few people who have done amazing submissions already to get it to, and done um, pages and pages. So people who are a little bit nervous about or not wanting to do a submission could just say, 
say um, I like Neil's and support Neil's um, submission is an, another way of doing it because I believe Jimmy Fields has got amazing writing and um, putting his in because he's directly affected by by his family. So um, yeah, the the concern that the group had was a quick turnaround being only four weeks with um, few people away from the area. They are this week trying to get some more information from far north and ask for an extension, but whether they get that, I don't know. Um, they feel that a public meeting should be held in Greaton for Greaton people to really understand what you're looking at, because all you know is a little bit of information that's been in the newspaper and maybe what people have talked about in the pub or wherever else and people's perception but unless you've got the facts in front of you you really really don't know and it'd be quite good to have the council there and far north and the community to ask some questions um because um it is quite a lot of information to get your head around no it is did they, um, something new in it yeah did, did far north do what i mean like how um that's the one out at kempton's place did they, have they done anything like that no i knocked on doors that's all they've done that's all i'm i think is about isn't it? That's about it. There's no been no joint community um, discussion or anything. Okay. It's just them, whether through phone calls or actually physically knocking on the doors. I'm not 100 sure who said what, but that's all yeah. we've heard from people that have had a call or knock on the door. Right? And then the, the, what they initially started off, they then extended it, so it's actually bigger than what they initially oh, yeah. did, and that's so it's affected a few more people that have like Eco Farm down down that down. Um, Right. Yeah. Yep. So, um, what concerns me is that the yeah. start of solar power farm for Wellington. You know, I mean, yeah. it's like the flattest land we get for the sunshine leaves and everything. You know, is it going to end up to solar farms? Well, well, one of, one of the biggest, well, there's lots of concern. Yeah. But the one concern when you go down Bimble's Cutting Road from Greydown towards Mark Borough. They used to years ago in the 60s, there were massive pine trees and trees down the, the left hand, so the eastern side of the road. The Waihini storm came along and took them all out because the, the wind that can come through there. So I'm pretty sure it's a Waihini storm that done it. It's one of the storms. Um, so between big cutting and the state highway now, you see all the big shelter belts and trees that part through Kempton's and Fields farms. They were all put in after that. The bulk of them were put in after that to stop the wind hammering the other side of the books cutting. So they put these solar, I don't call them farms, I refuse to, these power yeah. stations in. Um, they're going to cut all those trees down. So everyone over here is going to cop those winds off the tower. It's like you wouldn't believe. I did put wind in there, but you don't know. They, is there a proposal to replace those? No, they can't. can't because they, shed, they showed the all they can do is put trees around the other. So it's not just to, so, so to, 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 to remove the trees, not just to construct the plant. It's actually just to just to stop so, so they get the sunshine. The trees will obstruct sunshine onto the panels. Oh, okay. Put the trees to just stop. Visible. Visible. Yeah. I thought I, I thought <laughs> they intended to, to replant those. Is, is that not the case? Only around the outside to try and stop. But the, the visual fact impact. Is when, when you grow stuff in the ground, like because we live on that ground, go for no. The plants don't grow really quickly. We, we've got a hedge we planted four years ago. It's grown about a metre and we irrigate it. Yeah, right. To get it there. It's They're not going to be irrigating anything. We're going to have rabbits and hares eating every little plant that's there for. Yeah. It's going to take a lot. And these panels are four and a half metres high, mate. That's a house. So a stock truck's 4.3. The taller of them a stock truck. Mm. So when you see those big trucks going through town, look at them and think, geez, those panels are bigger than that. Mm. So it's um, they're not little wee six foot high things like a lot of people seem to think. I haven't seen any figures on the grass growth underneath them either. I mean, no, they talk about growing sheep underneath them. I mean, how Graham what field. can be there just be weeds? Graham Field and I had a discussion about that, and we reckon maybe two sheep to the acre. Yeah. It's not really fun. I haven't seen any research, you know, talking about how much grass they have. Yeah, and you can't feel it, they can't feel the light. So are we, are we opposed to renewable energy? I mean, what, what is it? Or is it? Say not. I think it's opposed to renewable energy. I think it's the impact of the plant the whole visual aspect you imagine coming from the tin hut basically from the tin hut to grey down all you're going to see is these glass panels mm. 
it's not all great. Yeah. Visually, I, it, visual aspect, mm -hmm. but I also think, um, what is the impact? Is it while we're wanting renewable energy, is this actually being a positive way of getting renewable energy? Well, yeah. Um, that's why the that's why we've had the information so put out to you. So. Anyway, I think that's, uh, well, it's a, sorry, we're just a, I think we're that Mr. Trigger as well. As I, I I assumed at the beginning that the this was actually generating power for greater. Yeah. And it's not at all right. It's just being fed, being sold back into the national grid. Yeah, yeah. it's going to Wellington and Palm. Yeah, yeah. So we actually don't. So Great Aunt doesn't actually get any benefits from the that question. Uh, either, at all, right? So I said, well, I think Great Aunt's benefit would be free power. Yeah, yeah, totally. Or discounted or something. That's how I that's how I, I asked that question. The other thing that was really interesting is that I um we did obviously we went to the Helios um, presentation. They are not a company that puts on roofs. They are only a power plant, mm -hmm. same as far north. And so those two would never yeah. ever look at offering that to Greytown because that's right. not what they do. I asked that question as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so so when you do the figures, so the carbon impact, if you want to look at the carbon impact. Um, solar panels are 15 times worse for carbon impact onto the, into the environment than windmill farms. Right. So to, for that 500 acres, so each one's proposing about 500 acres. So 500 acres of solar panels. Is each, sorry, each farm's 500 acres. Yeah, so there's 1,000. So each, each 500 acre block is equivalent to two and a half windmills. So what's more efficient? Mm. Yeah. You know? Is technology that's been around a long time and started and stuff like this. And as soon as people get battery storage, everyone's going to have a solar panel on their own. And that's the way we're going. We're getting down to the storage. And then you're going to be left when that happens. You're going to be left with older glasses. You're going to tie that up. That's the thing. You can't. You cannot. You cannot. They still, in their documents, they say they hope that in 35 years when it runs out, there'll be recycling available. You can't. You still can't. So what's happening overseas, a lot of companies are setting these things up. Then they sell their lease or their whatever it is on it and get out get out after five years. Yeah. And then when that next company gets to the end, they're just ending up with thousands of acres overseas of wasteland because you can't do anything with it. It costs you more to recycle. Oh, yeah. They yeah. can take yeah. some of the stuff out, but what's actually happening if you follow in Australia, um, that it goes it's going to the dump. Yeah. So I thought 97% of it was recyclable. But it costs more. Yeah. It costs you it costs you more to recycle yeah. than what you it's not, And there's nowhere in the world. It costs the rate payment. But that, that, that is the question. Do we have can we recycle here in New Zealand? So we can't. And Warren's, I don't know, yeah. Warren's just um, mentioned technology. What's really interesting, we've looked at putting solar panels on our roof. And I understand from Andrew, who did this speech, is that a lot of the technology is changing. There's a technology called solid state batteries coming out. It doesn't use lithium or anything like that. And so that's a, a, it's like phones, you know, the next one coming out. And so um, a lot of people who are wanting to put solar on their roofs are waiting for the new next, te next, te next technology because um, there's a lot of information about lithium's not great, but what you have to do to mine it and the materials that go in a lot of these batteries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, again, about being ethical, if you're buying chocolate and your bananas that are fair trade and respectful, then why would you buy a solar power panel that did the opposite kind of thing. I mean, I would compare it to what we're seeing in the forestry now. It's the oh, same right. sort of thing. Yeah. With yeah. credits, and, yeah. and you're ending up with rural areas with no people living there. It's all yeah. and it's yeah. not the end if you are keen on farming. Yeah, right. You want to live much boundaries so, than people. So, Joe, so are you asking us, the, the community board, to support something like what is it? What, what is your asking to do with SWAG? For us to do well, so on the 6th of June, you have to, um, people have to put in a submission for or against it. I, I, I feel. <clears throat> if you if if we don't put a submission against it, um, that we're opening up putting solar power plants Everywhere. In, in a residential area that should not be there, should not should not. It's, it's there's too many unknowns, and it will, I feel, um, will wreck the look of that area when you drive into town. So if you look at it, there's an international standard that says they shouldn't be within ten k's of an urban area. Right. So they want to do it 600 metres from an urban area, great, the other one. Um, then you go to Aussie and they have standards in states in Aussie where they're not allowed to be within 500 metres of the main road, 500 metres of someone else's property, 500 metres of state highway. 
200 metres of a small country road, so, so you know, out in the boondocks. Um, my brother-in-law has actually works at a big power station in WA. You know how much sunshine they get over there? So he's laughing. He said they're, they're about to shut down their coal station because they've gone and put solar panel and wind farms in. He said they just can't even compete. They can't even mm -hmm. produce enough power with all the sunshine they've got over there. So why are we trying to force it down and throw it here when we have to climb the train? <laughs> I guess uh, maybe, I don't know. What's the reason that it's here is to see if it don't. So just back to a couple of things is, I mean, like I am for solar energy and want to put solar panels on my house, but the difference we are talking about here is mm -hmm. what it is to put a solar panel on your house, which puts energy in your house, lowers your things, compared to what does this do? For me, my concerns have actually gone to the loss. I, I'm not in love with, with 500 acres of land lost to a commercial, because once it goes commercial, he can't take it back. And that's part of my issues with it personally, is that fact that we lose this rural land and how that is being developed. So when we look at our community plan and when we talk about how things are being developed, you know, we do have to think about as we're going to talk about solutions is, is it something that... What's the benefit to the community, right? Well, that's it. Mm. And, 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 and I mean, that's, the, that's, that's the fundamental thing. Like, yeah. What's the benefit to the community here? And, and to me, when you look at the vision, and you look at the blend of rural and urban. I mean, yes, I agree that we need more people to move in so that our rates can go down as we have more people, and I can see the benefit of that. But I also don't want to, I mean, come from the states, I don't want to be in concrete from mm. the one side of the state to the other side of the state. So I don't want to lose that little land that mm. fast for me personally. Um, I That's my concern is, is, is that. We're trying to go and be sustainable and we're trying to go and do resource and trying to go to it, but yet we're losing 500 acres, which is, I think, a thousand acres per farm. Products as land. To, to these giant sort of yeah. panel things that we don't know yeah. enough that it's actually going to be worthwhile and is it really fit great town? I mean, is that what we want? I mean, do we want people going down through? So to me, it, I'm all for solar. I'm all for the EV changes. I'm all for solar energy. I'm just not sure I'm for a solar plant. Mm, yeah. And I guess because I haven't been convinced that I'm for the solar plant and my gut check is against it, then I think that we have to look at it that way. So we put it on to the um, to this meeting because the submissions are due on the 6th and, and we do have to decide. So we have done in the past submissions. As we know, we delegated submissions to Warren for Wood Bullsworth to me or with the board. But it was, but it was subject to the approval. It had to be circulated to the approval of board, and that's why I, I know I pushed out with my were there. So I was like, I've got to hear from a couple more of you because I needed to get a majority before I could send it in. So, um, yeah, that's what we're here for. So, where are you on this? Well, I don't think there's much chance of it being extended. And may not be much chance of having a public meeting. So there goes more information. <laughs> really, I know there's going to be people for it and people against it. And I would like more information before I could really commit. But, um, and I mean, that's coming from a farm all my life. And um, there's a lot of outside pressure telling farmers what they can do and what they can't do, which, and this is example of that but um and i and i know the two farmers very well who are involved um but but i personally don't like it being there on my back doorstep because um i live past these superposed um farms and great into my town so i've got to go kind of past them yeah oh. I don't like the idea of coming as a town just looking at a big, because what it is is an industrial estate, which is one thing mm. the radians always stayed away from. They were thinking about the heritage and the trees and, and old buildings and all that. I just can't get my head around having a, a massive buddy. Why was Helios like put on hold? That was an interesting point. We're not too sure. There is a theory that only one power plant can connect 
So the a far north connect first, then the other one misses out. Who knows? They should have a massive upgrade to the substation, which is yeah. another thing. Once that one gets in, do they? The reason oh, I found that as an interesting the reason I found that as an interesting point was, I see you just one sec. I, um, the reason I found that as an interesting point is that raised in my head. If this is supposed to be energy that's supposed to be able to be utilized and spread out, why is there a limit to one place if if it's not meant to be able to? And Amanda, maybe you do have that answer. No. Okay, so, so the fact that Helios might miss out, it's only a possibility that one plant can plug in to that. That showed me that they were looking for a limited amount of something that they were wanting yet putting a whole lot out there. And that raised the question too, is this the future? Why is there, why are they saying there's only enough for one person to plug in? So what I can say is that the presentation evening that Helios put on, there was a group that went and that showed that they were not happy with it. Um, what I had a conversation with one of the people from the SWAG group who contacted Far North Farmers, and he is not aware that anyone is against it. He thinks everyone is, there's no, no, no objection. And the person who was speaking to Field Family said, um, well, I'm, I'm objecting for this, this reason, this reason, and I'm here, here's some questions, can you answer them? He couldn't answer them. So that I think they're going to be having a meeting. So. From uh, there's one group. Far north are having a meeting. Okay, well, um, just with one of the locals. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you've or maybe a couple of other people, but so you've got a perception here. One group knows there's pushback, and another group has no awareness whatsoever because they haven't had a public meeting or or information yeah. evening. So and they haven't had any feedback, and no one's been brave enough. Bar this person I know who actually picked up the phone and called that person. Maybe Monday. Might have been Monday. This Monday, so the field person was not aware. It's a little bit sneaky, doesn't it? That Far North haven't actually had a public meeting on this. It's a fairly big. You know, it just kind of feels a bit scurrilous. The council did say that, unfortunately, um, it could be the way that the companies have conducted themselves, some professionally or not so professionally. Um, um, around the country all over the place. And ringing up and talking to people when they probably shouldn't have done that. Because right, far I mean, have they, they built the one up in Whangarei yet, or is it? One fell over up north. One went under the water. The floods and all. In Helensville, that's that's where they're still proposing where it's flooded in Helensville. There's a, a, a group that's pushing back on that one as well. Um, and there's um, a, a solar power plant that's fa um, fallen over. It's cost developers 12 points. I mean, sorry. I'm going to find out if, if, if like, we're, we've got the discussion going and we may need to take it up. Can so I just ask the other question? Because, yeah, what I'm just going to try to find out is if we could have more time, if we need more time, if people want to feel that they want to read more, if there's another opportunity we have to be able to make this decision before the submissions are due. But yes, go ahead and ask Neil. I mean, well, what I'm interested in is economic benefits to New Zealand and the community. Because as I understand it, the carbon, if it's an overseas sperm, the carbon credits go overseas. Is that right? So, like the trees. Oh, they do, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, the carbon credits. I don't know if they're farm, was that? Yeah. We did ask about the economic, and you know, what's that, what's that called? That thing called the bottom line. And we talked about, you know, um, giving back. And so, what I understand is that Helios approached the Māori Standing Committee and offered grants. Um, and I, and I thought that was short, short sighted because if you were smart, you would say, let's get free power for the whole town. Why stop at a mm. scholarship? Or several scholarships. That's a silly. Can you imagine the whole town having free power? That's great. That's thinking big. But um, again, well, I mean, if, if the carbon credits, so the, so an overseas company takes the, the carbon credits, and we're left with a whole lot of glass. Well, I mean, I think it comes back to like, what's the community benefit from this? I mean, that, that, that's how, as a community board, that's got to be our so, focus, right? So you'll have a short-term benefit, right? You, people say it's 140 million or whatever, but. Let's face it, that's not going to go to Grey. No. It's going to go to out, outside big contractors all around New Zealand. It'll come in. So you'll have the motels for six or 12 months, might do all right in the cafes and that, and that's about it after that. Yeah, because they only employ like three people now. So yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah, employment, yeah. Nothing. So um, I'm not sure about the farm law, right? So that's the proposal we're talking about. But to give you an idea, the, the Helios one at, at the community meeting, the guy was asked, is this a New Zealand company? And uh, 
And he's like, yep, yep, I'm playing. And then he was asked, I think it was about six times, and each time they worded the question slightly different until he finally came out with the honest truth that it's actually, they're actually an American company. So they're an American own, company, own, yeah, yeah. Only our company, you know, it's just an LLE. But they have the chair and they yeah. live in Auckland or yeah. based in so New Zealand. Maybe so they're they're a New Zealand company doing good for the country, but it's not about that at all. Okay, so... But if we can just go to Amanda, and then for a second, because I think Amanda can let us know if we have more time to make this decision so that everybody's more comfortable with the decision if they want to get more information. So the timeline for submissions, as Neil said, will be, that will be um, under legislation, they will have met their obligation. So just to be clear, when um, an organisation like this makes an application, they have to do the work. It's not up to council to facilitate those count those conversations they're actually obliged under the act to do the work themselves um so those that engagement that information evening that you're mm. proposing that's their job to do that and if they don't do it well that's part of the consideration when it goes to hearing um best practice would be that you do agree in the meeting going this is such a big one that i feel like um that you there's so much <laughs> um variation of view that I think um, I don't know that you will land on something that you might all agree with so another option would be to um, and, uh, submit individually um, you could do something along the lines of um, submitting um, saying you feel like there's not enough information in the community that there are differing views that things haven't been clear that you feel like you know, some of this conversation might be part form your submission rather than a particular position. That would be an option. Um, mm -hmm. And then you, if you have a strong personal opinion, you could um, submit personally. I hope that helps. Yeah, yeah no, perfect. Yeah. 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 So we would do then a submission well, that was basically along with that, yeah. the mixed views. With a the submission of not enough information. So, yeah. Not enough consultation, not enough. They haven't made, the uh, they haven't made a case why it should go in enough. Yeah. And they certainly haven't said that. I'm very comfortable with that. Um, I want to, yep, Amanda. Sorry, the other thing I was thinking earlier was being really mindful um, that when you've got your personal hat on and when you've got your community board hat on. So, you know, that you personally don't like a certain aspect, that's your personal view. And, and being really mindful about, and I think a few of you have talked about, you know, what's the community benefit as a whole? I think it's a really um, good thing to keep that. It's absolutely perfectly okay to hold a personal view. Like we're all entitled to hold our personal views, but being really mindful that you are clearly articulate, this is my personal view, this is my per perspective. Um, and then you're thinking about your role in, in the um, as a representative for the Greytown Ward. Yep. That's exactly what I did. I, I did ask that main question. As a community, a greater community, what um, what what benefits would we get? And they and um, when I went to the Helios one, they said, oh, jobs and um, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, actually, a real benefit would be, say, for example, free power. And I said, well, it's a business. And I said, yeah, but, you know, um, yeah, yeah. So I didn't quite get what I was trying I to. That could be part of the submission. Then. If, I mean, if we delegate this for you to do a submission on on the but there's not enough information, not enough consultation, not enough showing the benefit. I mean, hand me the point that they haven't established why Greytown benefits the, the Greytown community board has to issue on things mm -hmm. that they're not looking after the community. Well, they, they, I mean, yeah, I mean, a friend of mine is uh, he's a Shetlander and lives in Shetland, and which is and that's they've got the huge, the huge oil refinery there, which processes most of the gas, except it comes out of the North Sea, and whatever. And, the, their their investment in the community there is absolutely massive in terms of roading and gyms and other things. But equally, all the residents get checks every year. You know, the, 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 you know, the, there's like a there's a benefit. Yeah. We're saying we put this massive big refinery at the end of the island, which is you know this beautiful part of the world. We go, and we know, you know, but there's there's jobs there as well. But equally, thanks very much. You know, there's a benefit to it. And and, you know, so, and, and they invest in the roads. They invest in the ground and the gyms. Like you go and you go. Oh, it's like this, you know, for 100 people, is like, you know, a massive school gym there, you know. How many, like, 
how many people in the town would actually work. So it actually creates quite a few. This problems. is it. Yeah, exactly. Like, so the benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Is, and the, yeah. And those benefits, they've, they've proven the benefits there. And, and it's, it's not yeah. benefiting community. Yeah. So they haven't done enough long term, no long term benefit for the community, no cons proper consultation with the community, not enough information being put out to the community because we know these are all here, but it, it I mean, that's my. I agree with that part. So that's why I asked you to send me that information when you brought Raiders, because like I don't know enough. And I've started to read that document. And then I have to be honest, I tangent yeah. this document. But it's a huge compromise, right? It's just like you know, asking us to like to accept this massive thing mm. with with to what end. So especially when uh, dark skies um, yeah, exactly, you know, yeah. You it's know. gonna be a tourist thing that when we when Louise and I went to listen to that in Great Town Town Hall, um Tikipo. Have, have mm. increased something like three hundred percent in their tourism just by having right. come to the area for dark skies. We haven't even really um, tapped into that. Yet. Tapped into that, <laughs> and it worries me the timing. You know, like yeah. Does that are you comfortable with a mission like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, um, so we, have to, we have to still delegate that. So I have to do. I, I have to. So do I have a mover to delegate that Joe Woodcock? makes a submission um, in regards to what we've discussed about as to the not enough evidence of support to the Greytown community mm. um, on behalf of the Greytown community board, yeah, not subject to approval via email yeah. prior to being sent. Yep. And, mm. Is that going to be a strong no? Um, are we going to say no because we haven't got enough information? Or no, what we're the strongly worded submission? Do you have it? So I'm you, have no. you haven't provided it. They're wanting to get the approval. So yeah. Our submission is so like essentially is saying yeah. there's not enough mm. um, information put out there. There's not enough evidence that you mm. are supporting the community. There's not enough evidence that this isn't going to be detrimental. Yeah. You haven't yeah. actually made your case. Mm. So we don't think it should go so we forward are, at yeah. this stage yeah. without more information. I, I mean, that's the position yeah. I think we're saying. Yeah. At this point, we don't believe this should proceed forward without more information because you haven't made yeah. your case. I think as Amanda said as well, like they've got obligation, obligations under the Act which they haven't met either in terms yeah. of public. And if we can point those out for sure. So, yeah. So yeah. I, checking that, that I'm the right person, though, too, because obviously this project doesn't affect my property, but if yeah. the other one does, and so um, someone else be more comfortable doing that. I, I'm just worried that some people might perceive it as a conflict. There isn't, yeah. but um, yeah. Yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm in the hearing <laughs> committee, so that'll me. Okay. I can help. Sorry. I help write it, but I can't put my name to it. It was, it was a fine line. Do you know what I mean? Like I just want to make sure that I, that people don't say, "Oh, well, Joe." Can't ever need it. All right. So what we okay? Why don't we? Can I rephrase that then? Do I have a mover to delegate to delegate one? I'll move it. delegate. <laughs> Make to make a submission to the far north to the far north uh the consult what is it far north solar farm, solar farm um consultation. Consultation. and then consultation. it can include um with the position that there is a lack of information being provided to the community um to, so, so to yeah so we're to saying. allow us to make an informed decision. Is that is, I think we're saying is, is that I think isn't the position we're saying is we're essentially saying that the granting of the approval of the application to develop shouldn't occur at this time because there's been insufficient information made to warrant it being done because of the lack of uh, consultation information and benefit to the community. Long term benefit. They haven't made out their case, therefore it should proceed. Or, so we have put it this. Not made out the case, so it should proceed. Does the council have the final say? No. no. Done, it's gone to an independent. Oh, is this one going to independent as well? Yeah, oh, okay. it's gone into public consultation. So, whereas I think Wolvers did it strategically, yeah. this time they've done it because it needs more information out there. 
council makes a judgment on what ones are publicly notifiable um, based on the level of interest and potential complexity. And um, But once that happens, you go to a commissioner um, that is an expert in RMA work. You, you don't rely on... It's, it's very difficult, difficult for governors to make calls on legislation um, when they're not experts in that legislation. And this is very expert level. Yes. Besides better on a one of the worst pieces of legislation written on the of the land transporter. Okay. Can I just clarify this resolution to make sure everyone's comfortable? Um, so it would be to delegate Warren Woodger to make a submission to the Farnar Solar Firms consultation on behalf of the Greytown Community Board, subject to approval by the board via email. Mm -hmm. The consultation or the submission would have the position that the consent should not go forward at this time as there has been a lack of consultation, um, community consultation, information provided to the community and clear benefit outlined. Something yeah. along yeah. those lines. Essentially, they lines. haven't made the case, therefore, yeah. There's been insufficient information. Insufficient information, information yeah. Presented to, for anyone to be able to mm -hmm. um, support one way or the other. Is the board still wanting um, oversight of this via email prior to submission? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just need a mover and a seconder for that. Woody's moving to the null second. Yeah. No, I, I I don't want to hold things up, but I, I just, as Amanda says, I'm, I'm thinking as far as the community is. Well. Yeah. I, it wasn't your it wasn't your one phrase. I, it, okay. I was reading the room. Yeah. Yeah. So. And we have to. I mean. I mean, that's right. There are going to be come to positions where we probably won't always agree. Oh, right. So far, we've been really good about it. So yeah. far, and it's good, and we want to keep doing that. Um, but but, but we can't yeah. disagree, and we are going to come to points where we are going to have divisions on things, and that's just the way things work. So, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't impact necessarily our ability to work together. Um, okay, so I just want to wait till they've got their. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so, I don't think so. Yeah, that's, that's no, I think it's really should be to do it. It's actually compared to the last bits we've had for our submission that we've had today. It's pretty much the same example. Yeah, so I think it had to happen. Go. Hmm? It had to happen. It's been all day, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so now I'm going to, if, if we're all, so we're going to move to the thing. I, I'm, I'm happy with that because essentially we're saying it shouldn't go forward at this stage. Yeah. Because so, there isn't an, a, a sufficient information. We're not saying why. It's so we don't pick ourselves. Young thing. I mean, they have to come. Enough. I mean, I said you. I've seen some of the submissions that are coming through and they, uh, you know. Yeah, if, if we can see some of them, then, then maybe we could, at a later date, we maybe we can back. These submissions, you know. Elizabeth, who um, lives down Bidwell's Cut and has done one, and she said she's happy to share. Um, and so you're um, more than, if you want to come out to have a read of what she's done, she's done an amazing job. Yeah. So maybe get those. It should be public documents because a submission is a public document. So she hasn't submitted it yet, but yeah, she's just given it to me to, um, to share with some of the. Um, because people are struggling to write them. She said, this is an example of one that she's done that she will submit, but yeah, it will become public. You're right, yeah. yeah. We all saw um, the Woolworths one from um, the Heritage Trust. Um, we all saw their submission, which was very detailed. So mm -hmm. if, if we could see something like that, it would be, yeah. But yeah, maybe that wouldn't Maybe send that one to, yeah. Send that one to, yeah. <laughs> For coffee, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, the dog like you to this. <laughs> okay, now to the fire tracks funding for festival at Christmas. So I don't have to seek a liberty to consider. It. Sorry, did that to add into it. Yeah. So, um, ages ago, um, when festival Christmas was coming back out, 
And there are a lot of things are coming through about how different people are um, supporting things towards the festival. I said that um, he should think about also because at that time he was not happy, of course, criticizing those traffic flags. Um, so I had suggested that he could um, come forward with a, had he thought about a flag tracks um, and he said he'd think about it. Um, and I wasn't sure if it had gone anywhere. And I know we've had different discussions and it's gone out to talk about Arbor Day and um, Arbor Day is still something that actually we all need to focus on because it's at the end of May as far as I'm concerned. Um, and so if we're going to do that, but essentially they have put, sent it to us an estimate. It's a quote. So the quote is for them to be able to do a universal flag that would be used in July. Um, they're happy if we were to agree to it to actually pick the design. There's two designs that they'll shoot through to us. Um, because we hadn't gotten that far, I didn't ask for those designs yet. Um, so I know that we talked about putting one up for Harvard Day. But I didn't mention to them about that. Um, and they would potentially consider it being up open to that, but they did say they would prefer it to be open for the whole month. And I have to concede that essentially the flag will be swapped off on the 4th of July because Arbor Day then finishes on the 3rd of July. Um, and so, and because they do bring in a lot of um, money and, and people and, and investment into the town, the Festival of Christmas is the largest now festival in the Wairapa. And I did feel that the community board should look for an, uh, an opportunity towards the tourism sort of aspect. And this was a way that we could potentially do that. Um, amazingly enough, the flag track seems to be the theme now because I also received, just so everybody knows, I received an email today from Angela Brown um, in Margaret Community Board who wants to know if we would all want to go into a universal track flag or dark sky. Um, so track flag seems to be on everybody's brains right now. Um, we basically have a lack of flags. Um, we don't have a full set of anything of flags. I do think that we need to get that boosted back up. I look at how nice the flags looked for Book Town in, in Featherstone and it really looked well and it kind of carried the theme through for the town. I mentioned that to them when they said it to me and I think they've gone to those people that got the flags for um, Book Town because they did look a lot better um, and a lot stronger. Um, and just on that note, and I'm doing side tangents, I have asked for the other flags to come down tomorrow and I'm not putting anything up right now because we just don't have flags. Um, and not enough of any type of flag. Um, so I know that we were talking about the Arbor Day. I did think that we could, if we wanted to do one for Arbor Day, that it might be almost more appropriate to do one in the month of June, reminding people and calling people to celebrate Arbor Day on the 3rd of July. Um, uh, because um, then we are able to do that. But I do sort of feel personally that the Festival of Christmas is a huge contribution, that it is a way of the community board being able to do a small bit towards it, um, to recognize what they do bring to the community. Um, it is, uh, does impact large areas of art besides just the retail, it's the accommodations, it's um, the wider area, um, it's the restaurants. Um, so it does do quite a lot of traction, um, and it is part of that building of the Main Street and cultural heritage, you know, because it does, in a lot of ways, we do sort of, I think it, our atmosphere of our town is part and parcel of what contributes to why the Festival of Christmas works, because it, we do, it is a beautiful town, dressed up, um, it is a beautiful town. So I am moving that we do and do the support. So I am putting forth a movement um, to consider purchasing the um I think I'm language. Language. for you. Um, all right, I think I can work on what I've got here. Um, so uh, it would be do I have a mover to but I have we got yeah. rights to the only people to put flags up or yes, we there are flags. So the flag tracks are owned by the community boards. Um, yeah. 
typically there is a street banner and flags form online um, that an organization will use and apply for, which will go to the community board for consideration. Yep. Um, the community board owns some flags. I'm not sure if organizations in Greytown do, but in Martinborough, some organizations own their own flags and they'll apply for a slot, which is managed by the community board to display their flags. There is a little bit of guidance around um, using bold and simple um, designs, um, avoiding white background, just some criteria that have sort of come through having a variety of flags. Um, but it is up to the community board at the end of the day um, to approve or not approve um, specific flags. And the community board, like I said, owns some and some organizations own some. Yeah. So it is a bit of a, a balance, a oh, bit no, of a mixed bag. They don't, but they might not. They might they, be all owned we, by the community the board. The only one I know is, is that is I think the wire up a garden tour applied to the Great Town Community Board to purchase their flags. But we we're holding flags. I'm not sure. I know there are some organizations that have purchased them on their own um, and just. I, I think you might have for sure. I mean, until it, yeah, yeah. the Booktown does but too. It might but I was just easy. trying to, I was just trying to think of the flags that I held because no, no one's approached us. Nope. I, I nope. can't think of anybody else who does other than the ones that we have. Yeah. So. My concern is with the design. I'd like it to be quite generic and I'm very mindful of the meaning of words. And what I mean by that is in the Great and Grapevine, several people who are religious are not happy that they use the word Christmas. And if you look at the word Christmas, and I've got a dictionary thing, a festival of the Christian church observed on the 25th of December in memory of the birth of Jesus Christ. And I know I can, Ruth Evans was the one that made a comment in the Great and Grapevine. She would prefer using the word winter festival over Christmas Day. To give you an, an idea of what I mean, is be, be like me saying <clears throat> in the middle of December, saying let's have a mid Matariki celebration. If you're happy with that, then you should be happy with this. If they say festival of Christmas, though, it doesn't say Christmas. It's festival of Christmas. Festival of Christmas, I don't know. Yeah. We had Christmas. Yeah. But, I think, but I think it's probably more, that's a problem for them to solve rather than for us to solve. No, but I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, they're backing, backing it when you're going to alienate the big part of the community that aren't happy with them using that next to it. Well, that's why why about three people here against 3,000 people who yeah. love it, you know? I mean, you know, you know, I, mean I just love their event, but yeah. I'm, I'm with those people, I don't think it should be called Christmas. The thing is, is it's not our event to name, so I don't, right, think, we, so. I don't, it's, I don't think we can name change that. The festival or the name of the festival that's not for us to change yeah. that that's that's a different yeah. argument and different discussion on a different day um but at this point we've had three years running of the festival of christmas and i don't see that name changing because i think that that's been taken to the village of great town village um and at this point, I think they're going to hold on to that. So, I mean, the issue is, is these flags. Obviously, if somewhere down the line the festival changed, then these flags wouldn't. But the, the reality is, is these flags aren't going to last 10 years. <laughs> I don't even know if they're going to last three years. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you. These flags, that's the only thing is, is that I don't know for sure where they're going to necessarily go. But uh, the idea is, is that it, it would be to support this festival and I think that I mean oh, my mother's religious and goes to church and can separate Christmas from the festival of Christmas so you know I, I think there's people that can identify there but I think there's other people who celebrate Santa Claus and everything that goes with reindeer and that with Christmas you know it, it just depends on I, I don't go to church. I think that we show the Maori culture as what well, basically the same same people are saying well, respect you do it for the Christ, Christ, Christianity I mean, if you, you how you use Maori words is very particular, and how you use yeah. other words. I only hear what you're saying. Yeah, and understand what you're saying, but that's a problem for Great Town Village here. Yeah, I know, I know, and it's I'm, 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 I support a flag, but I wouldn't support a flag. So, I, I, if you were voting, I'd be voting no that I don't support using the word Christmas. I'd be, but I support using a flag that didn't have that 
That's okay. the best I'm, that I I'm pretty sure originally when they first started that festival, it was just known as the winter fest, mid winter fest. I thought it was as well, actually. And somewhere along I'm, the line, I'm I'm Christmas, Christmas, but maybe I didn't tune into it when it was mid winter. Yeah, I, know, I, I, don't yeah. Know where the, I don't know where the Christmas thing came from at all, but I thought it was Christmas. I thought it was even the lights. Um, yeah, someone put some lights. Yeah, 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 it was. And then someone put all the Christmassy stuff on the walls of the mm -hmm. buildings and all some other. We'll call it. And over the so, last so, so we're saying. three years it's been yeah. Christmas because we had, it was the night before Christmas. Now, how many people do we know have complained about the word Christmas? I, I you know what the numbers are. I mean, is it? I saw I heard of one, I mean, I had maybe had one person read. A few people wrote in and then I've had a few people say to us that. But do we know, I mean, so we could. We could identify who those people are, numbers, names, and things, and go hold oh, one of them. enough of them to go. Okay, that warrants a change here. Like I said, so it's a majority. So I mean, like, oh, different oh, things. So the letter to the, the editor. The I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying, like, yeah, you know, I don't think so. I don't think it's a thing for an argument for us to get involved in. No, it's I we're just saying do we support the flag? Yeah. If they yeah. put Midwinter Festival on it rather than just but within the word yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Save, save a bit of the alienating the yeah. Uh, I, I know some shop owners yeah. are happy with it that we're, we're no, going to have to wait whole things. But they're happy to take the money though. No, yeah. no. Oh, well, they can, they, they can, well, that's their option to close close those nights then and not, not open their businesses. No, they, they, they object they, to it they, that they, much. They, they've been dictated to that they've got to hand money over to be open. No, they don't. They don't. Well, not no, at all. No, not at all. But they try to be told they are. And then, no, no they, there's no pressure on them to, to, to pay money at all. We talked to wasn't very happy and, and actually put. Um, Decided actually they were going to donate that money to the fire brigade instead. Mm. So they're still paying for it, but they're putting the money into the fire brigade rather. Yeah, choice sure. exactly. But I mean, no one's forced into paying. They can, they can choose to be open or not. There's no. So yeah. It's hard because we haven't got the designs in front of us. So if it was, you know, it's, yeah, it's their festival yeah. Christmas though. Uh, like I know it's going to because that's their their logo. They have a specific logo for their Christmas thing. It's festival of Christmas. So. I mean, they've now designed a specific logo to yeah. it. Because um, I think everything that they've put out. So how much money do they want us to fund? I sent you the, sent it to you. About 16, 17, 18, it's 15. 95, 02. 15, yeah. $1,595 is two cents. Yeah, but there's a couple of little costs there too. But, um, no, that's a total cost though. No, it wasn't. Oh. Yeah, no, I think that was oh. no. that, transport was overall, but um, there was one other one below it. Forty-five. Oh, I thought that would have been the total price for the whole thing. Oh, well, maybe it's so. Oh. But anyway, it was only about it, 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 oh, yeah. Yeah. The other little little issue I have is um, I know it brings people into the community and does a lot for the community, but it's also I believe it's also a commercial entity. Where do we draw the line at actually funding a commercial enterprise? It's not a commercial entity if it's not a single thing and it's a joint community thing and it's a community event. So it is an event that it's no different than Toast Martin, which is an event. Which makes a lot of money. Yes. Wouldn't it be fair if they paid for the for the band? Wouldn't that yeah. be the one they can put what they like? Alarm. All right. Alarm. Tell me to pay the boys tonight. <laughs> no. Then are we saying that if they pay for the flags, they can write what they like? They can write what they like. Yes. Uh -huh. At least, yeah, at least it covers us as a community board. Because we every time they get taken down and up, we're paying for that anyway as a community mm -hmm. board, aren't we? The installation and removal of them. Well, we're, we're that doing it cost very much. Yeah. Yeah. It's like $60 for that. It's, it's minimal, but yeah. It's all the men should charge up about $60 to put those things up. Not up and down. It's like a, mm. the year. So oh, really? It's on our budget. Yeah, it's in our budget. Okay. They're quite easy, I think. Um, I think it's just nice yeah. patching it and not putting it up. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's... I think they've become a little bit more simple. Okay, so... Then I still have to put that. Then I have to change that position. So, well, I put I've moved I put that forward. So let's just go through because um, I put it forward for 
to be voted and then we're moving through a new position or do I just that's okay so if you're not going to be funding the flags there doesn't need to be a resolution I can just note that members debated supporting the Greytown Festival of Christmas through the purchase of flags to be used for the month of July um, and that um, you noted that if the festival of Christmas was happy to purchase the flags that you were happy to have them put up for the month of July. So you don't need a formal resolution if it won't be funding any. Okay. So do you get back to Adam? Yep. Like, well, no, I'll go. No, it's not Adam. Adam's, Adam's, Adam. It's Adam country. Oh, is it? It's Rachel. Rachel's yeah, Rachel. 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 Yep. Rachel runs it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Then I think that formally will close the meeting, but we oh, there's that one I think that I need to have yet, which is. Um, so the council has got the submissions or the applications and Amanda, it's not applications, eh? The um for this the building at Stella Bull Park. They're they're open. Part for, of the community plan. Yeah, so it's in our community plan, but we need to write a letter which needs to come from you, which doesn't need to be a member's report or anything or a submission to Stefan and Paul Gardner saying that um that we would like them just to push pause on the process, which they can do while we evaluate what the community needs are around that building and whether that is the best use for it. Um, and maybe there are other options, and that would be council would then undertake a feasibility study, pros and cons, et cetera. And maybe, you know, there's other options available to them, which <coughs> um, that even... All right. So I just no, want to involved that we in our community plan, in our community plan have indicated yeah. that we wish it to go this direction. Yeah. I understand that they're looking at uh, yeah. the, the expressions of interest have been called for at the moment. Just, just to, of interest and asking for them to put pause on that. Yeah. Um, and that's it. But that's all it is that we've discussed it. I mean, it's in our community plan. Yeah. And for that process to be, yeah. Process paused. Yeah. Process paused, yeah. And then a feasibility. Yeah, Amanda? I, I have no visibility of this conversation, unfortunately, but that's okay. Uh, is, is that the, the hearing? No, sorry? Is that the hearings that are due to go next week? Um, so I spoke to Stefan yesterday. He said he just needs a letter saying this is what we want to do. Uh, okay. Then I'm too late to get it tabled for the infrastructure committee, but it can be mentioned well, at that again. It's so there are hearings can... planned? Is this, is no, this the it's... The tender process. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's oh, okay. Okay. For, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. It's the tender process um, for the. Is it Greytown? The old library. Yeah. Old yeah. Library. Yeah. Um, oh, gotcha. And the community board, I believe, has an idea of potential use. Um, so we wanted to go back to being in the library. We moved your offices in there. And, yeah. Anyway, just another use for that building that is, you know, okay. retail has never worked in there anyway. Community orientated use. Never worked. Yeah, community orientated use, exactly. And for all those options, it could, you know, could be like a youth centre, like, you know, and there's a number of things that it could be that would be a way better use of it than the current proposals. What's that, retail? Yeah, yeah retail, you know, and, uh, and or a um, office type hub. Thing of which there's other spaces and some of that could go into. Okay. I don't, don't disagree that we need something like that. I just think that's the wrong use for that building. I mean, given where it is in the park, with everything else around it, it could be like become a real centre of the community you know, yeah. for, for so many other activities that would throughout the town hall, but yeah. other things as well. Yeah. You know, it could go back to being a town hall. In that part, do we have to um, consult with? The librarians and and, and no. the community, and we just we just make the decision. Yeah, yeah. We're speaking to the community so far. I mean, like no one's gone. You're mad. We think the library the library could stay there, and one of the other options is that maybe the council officers who are currently in that building, that you know, that north end of Main Street, they could go in there and they could come out of that building and stop paying commercial rent, and that could become an office type hub or a retail space, right? And they could go there, but it's just. Uh, but better, you know, something something better for you, you know, for the use of that like the old library building. Ideally, the library, as far as I think, that's what I thought. It used to be really lovely. The back doors would be open up, and the kids would totally right. Kids would be able to read outside, and it was it was it was, it was yeah, all those things. You know, it's just yeah, the benefits. I think are huge, but I just think we need to stop 
that, that commercial um, uh, tender process happening while we look at it. Yeah. Well, can you, can you, you want to say that? I don't know. Learning the ass of Tate Relief. <laughs> Delegation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then that, if there's, if there is further discussion, but we were going to close the meeting down um, and then have a further discussion because uh, it hasn't made it to the agenda or out there, but we wanted to have a conversation about the appointment of the CEO and involvement of the community board. But I'm going to bring the formal meeting to a close um, and we can then go into a workshop about that. So thank you for everyone. If there's no further business, I declare the meeting closed. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Amanda, you'll